Action has started. You heard the bell. Bernardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley and Mark Kriegel coming to you live from the bubble at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And when the big boys step in, you don't want to step out for any reason, Tim. No, you don't. I hope you got your, your, your chips ready, your drink ready at the house. Don't run to the kitchen because it can end in the blink of an eye. You know, Rice started boxing late, you know, 24 years old. But, you know, he's very, he's very athletic for a big guy. He can move. He has great feet. You know, he knows what he's doing. You know, he's, he's very, uh, what do you say, um, very unpredictable at times. And he started out at the Michael King's All-American Heavyweight Program in Carson, California, where he got great work along Charles Martin and Dominic Brazil, a former football player. They're both former football players, but Jagba played soccer, yeah. that type of football, and, and Rice played tackle football. Jagba tries to establish everything off the jab. They sparred a few weeks back before they knew they were going to fight one another. And Rice told us, we'll see who took more out of that sparring session. If the fact that he couldn't touch me or the fact that, you know, he just wasn't working to land that big shot that one night because I got him second. It was, I wanted him first, but I got him second. Right. Well, the quickness, you can see the quickness and the, loosen, the elusiveness of Rice right now is giving Ajaba a little bit of issue. Ajaba just walking straight in, looking for the jab, a landing, landing the shot occasionally, but really can't get anything going at the moment. It's the first round, but we'll see as the, as the fight continues. Rice just leaving that hand out there, and Jabba connects with that stick. That's one of his best punches, and it sets up that big overhand right. And he's got a great delivery system for it. Yes, he does. That's one thing he knows how to do. He knows how to get in position to stin with the right hand, a Jabba. You know, and the one thing that I see right now from Rice is he leans back. And when you lean back like that with your hands down, well, the right hand, you're a sucker for it. Right there, just missed it. You lean back, you get laid out. Right there, you saw Ajaba. He threw the right hand. Kind of fell in a little bit, but he was he looked a bit desperate to land that right hand. Those are opportunities for your opponent to land offense. You make a miss, you need to be close enough to make them pay. And many consider F.A. Jogba to be one of the fighters who are considered the future of the heavyweight division. Mark Kriegel, there's already a blueprint. Governor of Nevada. We're talking about the best heavyweights in the world going back to back in December, December 12th and 19, if things go off as planned. But fans, I think, necessary for both of those fights to happen, especially for Wilder Fury 2. Three, actually. All right, Bernardo Osuna alongside Tim Bradley. There's that right hand that Ajak was able to deliver. Rice takes it and moves backward, but that's got to be the first warning salvo from Ajak but tonight. He set that up perfectly. Lined him up in position with the jab, right behind with the right hand. Big right hand once again. Sticks the jab to the body first and then the overhand right. Ajakma told us, I used to watch Vladimir Klitschko's fights, even against Samuel Peter, my countryman. But my dad's favorite fighter was Muhammad Ali and then Vladimir Klitschko. He said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure if my dad's going to be able to watch the fights tonight uh, back in Nigeria in the countryside. Says, but I hope to take this tape back to him so he can watch it and see me win. He was born in Ugeli, Nigeria. Um, it's not the big city like Lagos. And, that sometimes you have to go and, and walk miles to get water and we don't have electricity all the time so it's a hard life for the family of a jog but that's why it's key that he makes it as a professional fighter in the u.s now he's landing the right tim but he's doing it one shot at a time <laughs> that's all it, that's all he needs <laughs> that's all he needs to land that right hand but the thing is is that rice is doing a, a great job in taking some of the steam off the right hand by moving backwards Rice told us in that sparring session that Jagba was never 
able to land a clean shot on me. Already he's got a couple of nice right hands, but hasn't been able to finish off Jonathan Rice, who's in better shape than he's been for a while. Had a round of sparring with our very own Mark Kriegel over there at the Churchill Wild Card West gym. And Kriegel can tell the story about what happened with him. The dog was formerly trained in Houston by Ronnie Shields and now trained by Kay Karoma. Wanted to work more on his boxing skills, his footwork. No, oh, he has good footwork, you know, solid. He's a power puncher, so, you know, both feet are typically on the ground. And, oh, there's a new wrinkle right there. He actually dipped down and went to went with a body shot, a left hook to the body. That's impressive. There it is. Blinding jab right there to set this right hand. You see Rice, Rice was throwing his right hand, kept his head on the line, but Ajaba, he threw his right hand and got his head off the line. Here it is again. Beautiful sequence right there from Ajaba. You know, he, he hit him actually when he was coming in. You know, he hurt him. He hurt him pretty badly there, you know. But everything is off the jab. That's what I like. You know, fundamentals. Everything off. He caught him with the top part of the he glove. Did, he didn't need to turn it over. He yes. wasn't able to turn it over. Round three of a scheduled 10-round fight for F.A. Ajagba in his top ranked boxing on ESPN debut. Taking on Johnny Rice, the fighter who's trained. Oh, nice counter there by Johnny Rice. He's trained by Clarence Bones Adams here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Maybe I'll wake up Ajagba. No, but that's what he needs to do. You know, every time Ajagba, every time he extends with the right hand, he leaves himself open. He falls in with his right hand. That's the perfect opportunity for Rice to land his offense. He's off balance. He's not ready. He's not set to punch. But he just needs to do it more often. We see that's how it. Ajagba stepping on the foot of Rice continually. A little bit of gamesmanship. See, I like this overhead view right here. This shows me, you know, the feet. It shows me the positioning. You know, you can see the lead feet of both guys. They try to split each other. That's what I call the line of fire. The more you stay off this line, you see the feet, the front, the lead foot, the lead foot, excuse me, how it lines up, you know, seamlessly down the middle if you stay off that line the more often you're off that line the better it is for you you won't get hit and you see what a different fighter rice is when he lets his hands go i mean in his last fight losing in australia against dempsey mckean an undefeated fighter he only threw about 20 punches per round you can't do that in the, i mean in, in at the top level no. of the heavyweight division you gotta want to win bernardo that's just it. You know, like I said, he's talented. He has a, he has a lot of talent, but you got to want to win. Mark, what's uh, the thought process in Ebe Ajagba's corner? Kay Karoma wants Ajagba jabbing to the body and throwing more feints. He wants him to mix it up a little. Also, I'm not sure what you'd call that uh, sparring with Johnny Rice. He's just refrained from the mercy killing. <laughs> Heard he landed a nice body shot on you. Kriegel's as valiant as they come in terms of getting in there and doing actual sparring. Oh, there we see the footwork once again, the tripping between these two fighters trying to establish that lead foot. See, that was a nice right hand right there. But you know, what I like about what Rice is doing is he's isolating the offense of Ajaba. Ajaba was used to throwing, what, 74 punches around? Yes. He's not throwing 74 punches right now. He's not. He's isolating them. He's keeping them thinking. You know, he's using that lead hand. He's probing. You know, he's stepping in and out. He's keeping them honest and respecting his right hand right now. Great observation, Tim, as we come into the end of round three. This is a scheduled 10 rounder from the bubble in Las Vegas. Both guys. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's obvious. You know, I told you most heavyweights is heavy. 
I mean, lazy, I should say. <laughs> Most heavy, heavy and lazy. Heavy, heavy and hey, lazy. Tim. Captain yeah. Obvious. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most welterweights are welters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I, I think it's, you know, conditioning. He, he did lose 18 pounds from his last time out. Did Johnny Rice weighing in at over 285 pounds, but it's still losing weight, conditioning are two different things. Nice right hand there from Bryce. I mean, I think that's a frustration that Clarence Bones Adam has in the corner. It's like he knows when he lets his hands go, he's effective, but he's just not doing it anymore. You don't believe in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself. You know, he can he can he can he can win this fight if he wants to. He has the arsenal, he has the punches needed to win this fight. The right hand keeps landing for him. Bryce has nine knockouts and 13 victories as a professional. All his vic all his losses have come against fighters who have no losses on their record. Dempsey McKean out in Australia. Uh, Mahmoud Dabu 7-0 and, and another one of the big hitters in the division. Tony Yoka, the French uh, gold medalist. Stevin Shaw and Khan Shin and who, uh, Sheehan, who was making his pro debut. So it's not like he's losing the scrubs. No, he hasn't losing the scrubs, but then, you know, you got to go back to the gym and you got to want it more and you got to work hard. I don't care if you lost weight. Show yourself. Show what you've been working on, Rice. And uh, Jock, I, I have to say something, man. Observation I see. He slow as molasses, man. <laughs> He is so slow. My goodness. And he's eating right hands right now from Rice. There's that one two now coming back for from Rice and Ajakba is able to take it. But I mean, he talked about defensive responsibility and we haven't seen much of that in terms of getting his head off the line and, and, and movement. No, and he just blocked the jab to the to the stomach by bringing his hand down to block it. If I was Rice and I saw that, I will fake down low and come up with my hook and surprise him upstairs all right setting up that right Ooh. hand and once again it's there for him right. wasn't able to connect cleanly Ooh. That, <laughs> shot. <laughs> that shot was brutal right there the small little body shot that a job landed right there in that sequence when the referee was breaking him up that hurt rice he did not like that at all right. Coming in. that was left eye starting to swell a little bit see how they work on that in the corner Jacques said he had something to prove, and so far he needs to do a lot better than what we've seen in these first four rounds. Some time. There's a right hand. You see it, Jacques. Right? What are you? Six foot six, and you're, and you're bending down like you're a small man to get rid, get away from a punch. And the right hand met him. There it is. Another right hand lands for Rice. You know, Jagba didn't move his head at all. I understand that he, he doesn't feel the punching power coming from Rice. But what if he gets hit by somebody that reels some lethal punching power? That will affect him and could get him in trouble. But for the most part, nice uppercut right there. Seeing Jabba seeing the head of Rice leaning just a little bit forward. But Rice is not making it fun for him. Rice is using that one inch reach advantage despite the one inch disadvantage in height uh, against Rice. All right, what have you got for us, Mark? Spoke to Bones Adams in Johnny Rice's corner. He says, treat him like a heavy bag, push him back, believe in yourself. You can pull off this upset. I believe he can pull off the upset if he lets his hands go. It's not his nature. That's not Rice's nature. You know, Rice is, a, he's a, you know, you talk to him in the fighter meeting. He's a smart, smart guy, you know. Very meticulous about things. Very cautious about everything. He thinks about everything. He's a counter puncher at heart. But he can win this fight if he steps up the tempo. You know, they say you got to have a good soul. Well, the soul of the right foot of Johnny Rice is coming apart from the bottom of his foot. Oh, Lord. Well. well, they better get some tape out. I hope somebody got some duct tape in the corner. Oh, beautiful shot right there from Rice. That same right hand that Ajagba has no answer for. Seven, 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 two. 
big right hand from big actually jab. <laughs> it looked like a right hand, but that's how hard it was <laughs> from a jock bow. It was so hard that it messed you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, man. Probably wearing the Nigerian colors of green and black is the man who represented Nigeria in the 2016 Olympics in Rio. I was there present at Rio Central when he knocked out Nigel Paul out of uh, Trinidad Tobago. It was an impressive knockout, and, and I think he needs that type of performance tonight, but I haven't seen anything that would tell me he could do it through the first five rounds. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, he can do it. Ajaba can do it, because right now he's landing this six stick down to the body. You can tell he's been watching Andre Ward, because that's what the, the tool that Andre Ward used. That stick down to the body, that takes a lot out of, an, uh, out of a fighter. Big shout out to Andre Ward. Can't wait to see you in the bubble here, as well as Joe Tessitore, who's calling college football for right now. So pretty soon we'll all be together here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Have the whole crew double jab there from F.A. Jogba. Get ready for the right hand. It's coming. It's coming for Jogba. There it is. He's setting it up right now by shooting that jab to the body, getting the hands down of Rice, lowering him asleep, and then boom, right hand's going to sneak him over the top. And then he has Jacob stitched around if he had anything and Kevin Smalls if he had anything. So it's a team effort over there in a jog bus corner. But in the end, the formula is the same. You've seen it from the get go. He just has to deliver that big right hand as he landed 72 punches out of 221. That's three times as many as his opponent, Johnny Rice. Well, Rice is aware of the right hand. So Rice going to do everything he possibly can to get rid of it. So. Ajaba has to develop a left hook. Yeah. He has to develop body shot. He has to develop, you know, defense. Getting his head out of the way. Be responsible defensively. And don't get hit with right hands over and over and over. You know, whenever you switch promotional companies, it's always a question of did they give up on you or did a better opportunity come along? And he said, I want to prove to them that they made a mistake in letting me go. Yeah. And so far, I haven't seen that explosiveness, that desire, that that look in his eyes to, to want to be impressive tonight. He's taking his time. He's listening to his corner. Okay, Karoma, giving him good, good instructions to take his time. Don't force the knockout. Let it happen. Let it develop on his own. And he's, the longer the fight goes, the better it is for him, considering yeah. his conditioning of, of Rice. Hey, he's still got 10 rounds of work. He's still got time. Slowly, with that jab, he's breaking down Rice. Rice is sitting right in front. Look at his mouth, wide open. Weff running, Drac Dracula's running for the uh, the probing. You can't leave your hand out for longer than a second. Unless you can do two jabs in a second like a jog we just did. That's legal. You know, you constantly see the same sequence from a jog, a jog, the jab, jab to the belly, right hand up top. You know, not a whole lot of change up in his arsenal. You know, he's just very fundamentally sound, very, you know, ordinary when it comes to his punch selection. And that's good enough, in my opinion, with today's heavyweights, it's good enough. To win championships. Is it though? <laughs> and look at look at Deontay Wilder. Yeah, Deontay but, Wilder had that one too. But that was I mean, that's like concussive, explosive, you know, once in a generation power that we see from yeah. Deontay Wilder. I mean, yeah, he, he hit you, he he, he knocked your soul out of you. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean look, with all due respect to, to Ajagba, he's been able to land a couple of solid right hands, yeah. you know, and, and Rice has been able to take him so when you don't have that type of power, you got to develop something else around it, as you mentioned. So we're coming to the end of this round, and our main event is coming up next. Jose Pedraza will be so an Olympian who represented Mexico in those same Olympics.
He says, if I do well, maybe they'll give my brother a shot. So not only is he carrying redemption for himself, Tim, yeah. but he's looking to redeem his family and open opportunities for his twin brother. Yeah, well, speaking of him in the fighter meeting, that's exactly what he said. He just said, you know, I, I, I just don't fight for myself. I fight for my family. I fight for my, my daughter. I fight for my, my girlfriend. I fight for everybody, even my trainer that, you know, came back, had left him, and now is back with him. And yeah. they're on the journey back again, so. It's like that couple where he was drinking too much, yeah. partying too much, yeah. and he said, you know what, I can't be here to see you destroy yourself. Then he redeems himself a little bit, and he gets a chance, and now they're back together trying to make it work. So boxing reflecting life many times. Rice breathing through the mouth here in round number seven. The right hand once again. F.A. Jogba looking to deliver. That was beautiful. A Jogba shot a jab out there and actually threw a hook. That was the second punch he threw. Changing up his offense a little bit. That's great. Stick to the body, stick to the chest. A lot of times you hear what trainers say, just throw it. Hit him on the shoulder, hit him yep. in the chest, hit him anywhere. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do, but you, you see you see what Rice is doing, right? He's just trying to isolate the offense of a jock buff. He's not trying to win. He's not trying to win. He's just trying to survive right now. Well, they say, I'm just going to take away his best weapon. A jock buff's best weapon, no doubt, is that right hand. Rice is doing everything in his power to stay away from that right, although he got clipped there with it. Mark, what's uh, going on with Kay Karoma? What's, what are his impressions so far through seven? I asked him before why F.A. was getting hit with those right hands. He goes, I, I need him to get his head off the line and not load up for one punch. This is something he has to improve on. That was uh, one of the talking points leading into this fight from F.A. Jogba. Continuing to be a student of the game, learning about the game, but it, it's those small things, those fundamentals that you look at, and, and even F.A. Uh, um, F.A.'s trainer, Kay, told us, look, Bernardo, you've seen these guys in the Olympics. Sometimes they come from third world countries. Sometimes they come from countries where the training level isn't high. And he just got here on heart and, ta and, and natural talent. Now he's still learning the game. Yeah, it's going to take some time. But like I said, the development is inside the gym, you know, in sparring. You know, the fact that Ajaba is, is going late, he's been 10 rounds once already, you know, so he's developing actually on the job right now, but he needs to go back to the gym and work with Kekaroma. He hasn't had him in a long time now. It's been a little bit of time they've been working together, so it could take a little time to see maturity. To compete with these guys. Now, Kay said, look, if they offer him Anthony Joshua tomorrow, we're going to take it. But the reality is we want him to develop those skills over the next two years. So when he gets that shot, he wins the world title. Now, we see that he's landed almost 100 punches so far, 290 thrown through the first seven rounds. So not quite up to his average, but he's landing at a 32% clip. Yes, he is. And he's actually trying to throw body shots now. He's throwing a left hook to the body on rice, shooting a jab downstairs. And I'm expecting him to come up with something. Come, come up with something over the top after throwing those body shots. Talking about half of the punch output for F.A. Jocko compared to the 74 punches per round. Yeah, you see, look at look, look what Rice is doing. He looks like he's going to do something. He looks like he's going to do something. <laughs> so what does it do? It freezes up a Jocko. Jocko's like, uh, I don't know if I want to commit. I don't know if I want to commit. You know, but honestly, all he's doing is he's just stalling. That's it. Just stall him. He's looking like he's going to do something, but he really is. So you're telling me that Rice is like a cobra when it opens up its hood, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. if you want me to, I'm going to do something, so don't come closer. But yes. he doesn't really want to spit the venom, but yes. if he has to, he'll do it. Exactly. All right. Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> National Geographic in the house. <laughs> Where's that stick from Rice? I mean, it's not like a Jogba's getting away from the punches that Rice throws. It's just he's not throwing as many as he needs to. He's not, you know, and, and, and you know, a Jogba is following the script right now. He's following the script of what Rice won. won. You know, when you get guys like this that will stall you out, that will isolate your offense, you got to get your hands working. You know, the busier you are, you know, the more they're going to have to worry about. Right now, Rice is not worrying about little, not too much, but just the right hand. He's looking at the right hand. He's like, okay, I know what you're trying to do. 
Ajagba got to switch up some things, pick up the tempo. The only time F.A. Jogba went the full 10 round distance was against undefeated Turkish Olympian Ali Demerezin. That was here in Vegas in July of last year. He overcame an injured right elbow in the first round on the Pacquiao Thurman card. Uh, we don't see outright any physical issues tonight, but I don't know if he's thinking too much. I don't know what it is, but Ajakba just does not seem very confident in, in what he needs to do tonight. Well, that's what they want. They want him to be a thinking fighter. You know, having, you know, high volume is great. It's fantastic, but you leave yourself open. Every time your hands leave your face, you leave yourself open. They want him to be a more of a methodical type of boxer. Set up your punching power. That's the reason why he got with Kei Karoma. That's what they bring, you know, Shakur Stevenson and guys like that, man. That's what they bring. And the dopest part about it is Shakur Stevenson is in this man's corner. He shows up to training camp to watch him train and gives him tips. And he's in his ear, which is even more important as we listen in to K. Karoma in F.A. Jogba's corner. You know, you say you're slowly breaking him down, but he needs to pick up his output. That's what he needs to do, pick up his output. Easy, easy. Rice keeping that left hand very, very close to his hip has been the case throughout the fight and inviting a right hand from Ajakba. Look, heavyweight division, it only takes one punch, a punch that you don't see. So you got to do everything as right as possible. You know, you just can't rush in there, you know, give up your balance, overcommit, and then get caught with something silly and get hurt. Ajakba right now is taking his time and trying to set up this knockout right now. So, Mark Kriegel, you were in the corner when, with Kay Karoma. What's the thought process going on there and how you can finish this fight in the last two rounds? Well, I asked Kay, how does the F.A. finish a fighter who just wants to survive? And he says, you box and you break him down. You stay with your discipline. You stay with what you've been taught. Thank you, Mark. A lot of time. Ooh, ooh, nice right hand there from Johnny Rice. A lot of times you, you fault guys for getting away from the game plan. Yeah. But sometimes when they get away from the game plan, things, beautiful things happen in the ring. Look, at this is, uh, you know, this is, this is all about maturity mm -hmm. right now for a job. Club. You know, he's learning right now. He's learning on the job right now. These are, these are very important rounds for him in his career. Right. Yeah, come on. And Kekaroma, he wants him to just stay disciplined. You know, a disciplined fighter can win a lot of fights. Listening to your trainer. There's that nice right hand from Johnny Rice, who has the tools to make it happen, but just maybe not the physical conditioning to do it. Uh, physical conditioning, that's more, it's more mental. You don't have the mental to do it. He's okay with just surviving. That's the reason why he has five losses. He can win a lot of these fights. He's very athletic. As you can see, he can hold his own. You know, against a hard puncher like a Jabba. Mm. But he got to want it. There it is. Another big right hand from Johnny Rice. And, I mean, right. just like we talk about a Jabba having that right hand, Rice could erase everything he's done wrong in this whole fight with one shot. The same shot over and over. I always say, if you get hit with the same shot over and over, something is wrong. You know, you gotta be able to compute that. Keep your left hand up. Get your head off the line. These are things that I'm sure that K. Karoma preaches, but a Jabba just has to do. It's one thing to study the game. It's another thing to apply it once the punches are flying. I'm pretty sure that Clarence Bones Adam is gonna have some select words for Johnny Rice as he comes. Charge, don't leave anything out Listen. there for me. Listen, this is all mental right here. When you're tired, you're fatigued, you know, you feel like you can't hold your hands up, man, it definitely fatigues, you know, and that tiredness, you know, make a marshmallow out of everybody, bro. It really does. It softens you up. So you have to bite down on your mouthpiece, grab a hold of your onions, and say, hey, I'm here to win. I'm here to take you out. I'm here where to do whatever I need to do that's necessary to win this round. I mean, we just saw the CompuBox numbers, and it was pretty impressive that Ajakba's only landed 25 power punches compared to 21 for Jonathan Rice. I understand that Ajakba's jab has landed at 96 uh, times, but 
this is the heavyweight division, and if you want to get a world title shot in the near future, you've got to make noise, and the way to make noise is by laying guys out. Laying guys out. But you know, you're not going to be able to knock everybody out, and right now, Ajagba, if this fight continues to go to distance, he's going to learn a lot from this fight. He's going to go back and look at the tape. You know, he's going to come back and know that he needs to move his head and not keep his head on the line. There's a lot of benefits in going to distance, especially as a heavyweight. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Johnny Rice when get, once again with a short right hand. I just don't think that he's learning anything that he hadn't learned before. I don't think he's applying anything new, and, and I'm sure there's frustration from Kay Karoma because occasionally. I mean, we're talking about 16th fight as a pro. I mean, 14th fight as a pro. He's seen this before. Yeah, he's seen this before. I hear you, Bernardo. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's a process, you know, getting with a new trainer, trying to teach you new things. It takes some time oh. to develop. There's that stick from F.A. Jock, but that one's natural. That's the punch that he was born with. Beautiful stick. But the stick works if you follow up with something. Yes, yes, follow it up. If, you don't, if you're afraid to throw it to the head, throw down to the body with the right hand, and then come up with the left hook. You work that hard to land the jab, and throw the power shot. It's funny because the, the jab is the lost start of boxing, and the jock has got a great jab. Yes. And he just doesn't do anything with it. And, and that's the, the frustrating part is when you look at it, it's like most guys say, man, if they had a jab, they'd be impressive. This guy has a jab. It just doesn't go wild after he lands it. No, you don't want to go wild. You don't want to give up your base and balance for offense. You want to stay underneath your feet at all times. There you go, exchanging jabs and right hands of Rice and Ajagba at the end of this 10th round. Judges will have the final say, but nothing too impressive for these former sparring partners. You know, it was an impressive win tonight for Ajagba. I, I think he won the fight. You know, Could have, should have, would have. Hey, I don't give no more victories out. But here, that was a devastating right hand right there from Ajagba. That's his signature punch right there, the jab and also the right hand. But he's a little bit weak in the transition, as you can see. Him bending down right there, getting himself in a bad position for the right hand. Lands a nice uppercut there. But in transition from offense to defense and back to offense, he's weak there. He needs to go back to the gym and work on that with Kei Roma. His defense, getting his head off the line, that's very important, especially for a heavyweight. He cannot continue to take those right hands over and over and over. And then also pay more attention to the body. If you want to break a guy down, go down to the body. The jab to the gut was fantastic. It was. It was impressive. But you can do a little bit more. Six punches per round overall. Last Ending 131 of 406 did F.A. Ajagba. After 10 rounds here inside the MGM Grand, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Max DeLuca has the bout 98-92. Adelaide Bird and Dave Moretti both score the bout 99-91. Declaring your winner by a unanimous decision, F.A. the one and only Ajagba. Ajakba improves his record to 14-0, 11 of those victories coming by way of knockout.